The Jets trade for one of the top pass rushers in the NFL. We're breaking down all the implications of the Jets making a deal for Hassan Reddick today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Monday, April 1st, 2024, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. Thanking you so much for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast so you get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps us out. helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Well, today we have a blockbuster trade to break down. On Friday, the news broke that the Jets have traded for star pass rusher Hassan Reddick from the Philadelphia Eagles. The Jets are sending a pick in 2026 to Philadelphia. It's a day two pick. It's a day. Th- it's a third round pick. Unless Reddick plays at least 67.5% of the snaps for the Jets this year, and gets double-digit sacks. And if Reddick plays at least 67.5% of the snaps and gets double-digit sacks, it becomes a second-round pick in 2026. Uh, I mean, I'm a little surprised the Jets made a move like this for a defensive end. Maybe I should not have been, because we talked plenty last week. Actually, we spent two episodes last week talking about the Jets potentially pursuing Jadavion Clowney. And in those episodes, I was a skeptic of of trying to sign Clowney because I just didn't see him having an outsized impact on the team. My views on Reddick are different because Hassan Reddick is not just a good player. Like I've always viewed Jadavion Clowney as a good player, but what's a good defensive end add for the Jets? I'm not sure a whole lot. Hassan Reddick has been one of the top pass rushers in the NFL over the last four seasons. In fact, he has the most, I'm sorry, the fourth most sacks in the NFL since the year 2020. He's He's had, he's had over 50 sacks in that time and every single season, He's had at least 11. So it's not just like one season where he went crazy and everything else has been pedestrian. Now, his best season was 2022, where he had 16 sacks, made second team all pro. But this has been a guy who's been consistently in the double digits as far as sacks go. And this is a guy who's consistently generated a lot of heat on the quarterback. It's one thing to get a good player. It's another thing to get a great player. In the last couple of years, Hassan Reddick has been a great player. One thing I t- talk about frequently, if you're an everydayer, you hear me say it all the time in the offseason, we always focus in the offseason on filling holes. We always focus on making positions that are weak stronger. We always you know, if you can take a position that's really weak and just make it okay, you know, that's a way to improve your team. But sometimes we forget another way to improve your team is to take a position of strength and make it even stronger. Now, it would take a great player, I think, to make the Jets defensive end position better. But through much of his career, I think it's fair to say, or at least through the last four years, he's a bit of a late bloomer. He's kind of a disappointment his first couple of years as a first-round pick out of Temple. But the last four years, Hassan Reddick, again, has been one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. And I think it's fair to say you know, he's probably going to go a long way towards replacing Bryce Huff. Now, if you want to sit around, and I my thought pot, the thought passed through my mind on Friday when the trade was announced, if you want to sit there and say, wait, the Jets let Huff go to Philadelphia – and they end up giving the Eagles a day two pick for a guy who's four years older and a guy who's, you know, about as productive as Huff was last year. The two players were about equally productive last year. You know, I can't argue with that. And I think it's fair to say that these two moves are connected in some respect. You know, the, the, the Reddick probably would not have been available if the Eagles had not signed Huff. The Jets probably would not be in the market for Reddit if uh, Reddick if they brought Huff back. These are It's fair to say this. But I think it's also fair to say the Jets traded for a really good player. And I think it's also fair to say, again, Hassan Reddick has been one of the top pass rushers in the NFL the last couple of years. I think adding Hassan Reddick to your team, even a team where the defense is a strength, even a team where you already have one of the top defenses in the NFL, even a team where defensive line is a position where you were strong and defensive end was a position where you felt pretty good about what you had, adding a great player like this changes things. It takes your def- It just takes your defense to the next level. And it's a difference making kind of move. You know, I've been sitting here all off season and saying, and I'll say it again, 
why did you why would why did the Jets not make moves like this last offseason? The last offseason they got Aaron Rodgers and then they bring in guys like Lazard and Randall Cobb and Billy Turner and Nicole Hardman, guys who are just like not very good players. Randall Cobb was a good player early in his career, but not by the time the Jets signed him. They should have been going out trying to get difference makers. You know, if you're going to try and maximize this thing for the short run around Aaron Rodgers, who you know maybe only has one or two years left, you go and get guys who are difference makers. And they've done that this offseason with Tyron Smith, with Mike, oh, Mike Williams, and now with Hassan Reddick. This is a team that, you know, is all in. And we could talk about the implications of that. And the implications of this are not all good. And we'll probably talk about that in the days ahead. But the worst place to be to me in the NFL is like the halfway point the Jets were entering the 2023 season where they you know, kind of were pretending to be all in, where they were you know, burning through a lot of future resources to try and maximize the present, but they weren't really trying to maximize the present because they weren't bringing in great players who could tip the scales for this team. It's not easy to win a Super Bowl. But you look at this Jets roster right now, and I don't see a lot of holes. And I see a lot of areas where they're very strong. And this is a team that should be very formidable in the year 2024 if everybody stays healthy and everybody performs to the, the, the level they're expected to play at. And the older players don't decline. And I understand there's a lot of ifs here. And listen, if you're a Jets fan, I don't need to tell you any of this. You know, we're Jets fans. We, we've seen big offseasons before. The Jets are the chiefs of the offseason. The Jets always win the offseason. The Jets always win the offseason championship trophy. We understand that. But at this point in time, all we can do is judge how the team looks on paper. And of course, paper doesn't always mean things play out the way you're expecting it to during the season. You know, this team has not played a game together. Understood. All those caveats you want to bring them up, that's fair. But the Jets are a stronger team with Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick's a difference maker. There aren't a lot of difference makers in the NFL. The Jets pass rush is better. Jets pass rush is ferocious now. When you've got Hassan Reddick and you've got Quinn and Williams, you have two guys who could be double-digit sack guys potentially, and Jermaine Johnson, who's a Pro Bowler, who's you know I, you know maybe could be a double-digit sack guy, more of a complete player. Jermaine's very good against the run, and he's he really improved as a pass rusher this past season. And you still have John Franklin Myers, who's a very solid player on this defensive line. That's not to that's not to talk about who we have at linebacker and Quincy Williams and C.J. Mosley. It's not to talk about who we have at corner and Sauce Gardner and D.J. Reed and Michael Carter the second. Is really talented group. And even though this was a defense that was already a, a top unit, I don't care what you say. You add a guy who's been one of the most productive pass rushers in the NFL the last four seasons, it just make it better. I did a couple shows early in the offseason where I, I mentioned this, where I understand that, you know, we talk about resource allocation. A lot of it should be focused on the offense this year, but you can always make a unit better, even a really good unit like the Jets defense. And that's what they did again. And, you know, like, I think the Jets probably would have been okay without Bryce, without Bryce Huff, but Reddick, and if you look at like some of this, some of the metrics, there's a, a, a stat called pass rush win rate where, uh, which essentially judges how frequently uh, a pass rusher beats a block. It's not just about like whether you get a sack. It's because sometimes sacks are based on just the offense messing up based on how, how frequently pass rushers uh, beat blocks. Reddick's top 10. In fact, his, Numbers were almost identical to Huff. Reddick had 11 sacks last year. Huff had 10. So you know you went a long way towards replacing what you lost in Bryce Huff, at least in the short run. And I think that you know any objective analysis would have to begin by saying Jets got an excellent player, and the Jets are a better team now than they were this time on Friday. Now, as you're on the Locked On Jets podcast, we'll continue our discussion of Hassan Reddick. Never too early to place proper expectations. What can the Jets expect? You know, I'm not sure he's going to produce as much as some Jets fans are projecting, but I still think he's going to be very good, and I think he's going to give the Jets what they need. And I'll go into more detail on that as we continue this Monday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the 20 MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. There's so much action going on. I mean, it was a great sports weekend when you talk about the pro sports, when you talk about college hoops. And now we got the final four. Will it be the dominant UConn team, the Cinderella NC State team? Will it be the Purdue redemption story trying to become the second team 
ever to lose as a one seed to a 16 seed one year and win the championship next year or Alabama. I don't really know what the story is with Alabama, but either way, again, on FanDuel, 200, you can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. And again, you can bet on the tourney, uh, Major League Baseball, the NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. A big shout out to you every day. This is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. Today, we're breaking down the New York Jets, making a big trade, getting Hassan Reddick, a star pass rusher in a deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. Jets are sending a 2026 day two pick to Philadelphia, probably a third, a third round pick. If Reddick hits certain conditions, it could elevate to a second round pick. I'm not sure he's going to hit those conditions, though. I mean, first of all, one of the conditions is he has to play at least 67.5% of the snaps. If you look at like the way Robert Sala rotates guys in and out on defense, that seems kind of unlikely. Reddick was at 74% last year with Philadelphia, but I would expect the total to go down, in part because the Jets have an incentive to bring it down. If the Jets bring it down, they give up a three instead of a two. That's no small deal. You don't want to give up a two for Hassan Reddick when you can give up a three. But also the Jets have a lot of talent at the defensive end position, so they like to rotate guys in and out to keep them fresh. It's unlikely any defensive end is going to have 67.5% of the snaps. Um, and Reddick would also have to hit double-digit sacks, and it becomes tougher to hit double-digit sacks if your snap count is reduced. What are realistic expectations, though, for Hassan Reddick? And naturally, the first thing people gravitate to is a player's best season. Like Whenever, whenever one of these moves is made, people always point to his best season. Oh, if he could do that again, that's great. So people look at 2022. That's when Hassan Reddick had 16 sacks. He was a second team all pro. And people are saying, 16 sack guy, he's going to get there. Well, let's be a little bit more realistic. It's called a career year for a reason. It's the best season of a player's career. And they typically don't replicate it, especially at the age of 30. But also keep this in account. Keep into account that the Jets have every incentive to reduce his snap count this year. You know, he's probably not going to see as many snaps. And also the Jets have defensive end talent. And again, in Jermaine and John Franklin Myers. And beyond that, it's just a philosophical thing with Robert Sala. Robert Sala likes to ro load the roster with defensive end talent. He likes to rotate guys in and out. He likes to keep them fresh. And I think that's a good idea for a couple of reasons. First of all, within games, you want to keep your defensive line fresh. Um, you know, you talk about a, Jet, the Jet, a Jets team that's expecting to win games this year. They're expecting to have leads in the fourth quarter trying to close games out. You want your pass rushers when you're trying to close the game out to be able to get to the quarterback. You know, I think one of the things that's fair to say is that as great of a defensive coach as Rex Ryan was with the New York Jets in, during you know his tenure, as as well as those defenses played, especially those first two years when they went to the AFC Championship game, Rex's defenses gave up a lot of points uh, when they were trying to close out games. They gave up a lot of game tying, game losing drives, and you know, was it that they the guys were tired? I, I mean, I don't know about that, but. I, I always think about that when I think about Salah's philosophy, and I think it's sound. The second reason you want to have a lot of guys to rotate in and out is, well, you want guys fresh by the end of the year. You don't want, you know, if guys take up, if guys need less snaps, if guys are taking up less snaps than by the end of the year. And if you have to remember the season's a grind. The season, the season really drags on. Guys get nicks and, nicks and bruises along the way. By the time you get to November, December, a lot of guys in the NFL are playing hurt. They're playing, you know, they're, really dealing with with stuff the, to the extent you can reduce those bumps and bruises it's a positive thing for your football team the third and maybe the most obvious reason tangibly is you want to have depth in case there's an injury you want to you know you want to have a good guy who can replace the player who got injured so you know these are all factors but most of them are pointing to Reddick, Reddick snap count being reduced so I, I mean is it fair to expect 16 stacks I'd say no is it fair to expect Reddick to, Reddick to continue his 11 sack streak, four straight years with at least 11 sacks? It could happen. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I, if you were asking me the over under, I'd probably go with the under in part again because I think his snap title, total is going to go down. But also, I think it's fair to point out that this is a guy who's turning 30 during the season, you know, and that's typically a point where you see some sort of drop off in production. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to go become a two sack guy, but you know, 30 years old, Reddick, especially a guy whose game is very athleticism based, you know, he's kind of undersized, you know, he's not a, not a guy who, who wins based on, based on, you know, power um, and 
athleticism tends to age worse than power at 30 years old. You know, you can expect some degree of athleticism to drop off. And again, that's, that doesn't mean he's going to become a two, one to two sack guy, but it may drop him to like the eight, nine sack range. Other thing. Uh, and I actually looked at this. I looked at how players age in the NFL. So I took a look at every player who was 29 years old uh, and had a double, had had a double digit sack season since 2010. And there were 21 players who, at age 29, had a double-digit sack season since 2010. Of those, 18 of them saw their sack total go down the next season. So I think that what that suggests is that there'll be some degree of modest decline. Now, here's the good news. Those, those players that I mentioned, the guys who had a double-digit sack season at the age of 29 and then hit 30 and declined, they still averaged eight sacks. And if Reddick posts eight sacks, I mean, that's not the worst outcome in the world for the New York Jets. Again, because you have a reduced snap count. And the other thing to remember is that with a reduced snap count, the counting stats may go down, but the efficiency may go up. I mean, what was the thing, what was the thing that was greatest about Bryce Huff? It was the ridiculous efficiency with which he got to the quarterback. I mean, when he was a part-time player before the Jets increased his snap total, he was getting to the quarterback around 20% of the time, which is out of this world good. Now, when his snaps increased, his efficiency went down. He's still a very good pass rusher. You know, he still finished with double-digit sacks, still got to the quarterback at a high rate. But the efficiency was down. So Reddick may produce lower counting stats, but when you reduce his snap total, you keep him fresher. Maybe he plays more passing downs now where he can just get to the quarterback. Maybe his efficiency goes up. Maybe he gets to the quarterback at a, great, a greater percentage of his snaps, even if he's playing less snaps, even if the total volume goes down. He produces you, he, his, the snaps he gives you are at a higher level than he did in the past. And that would be a very good thing for the New York Jets. So when I say, like, I think his sack total is going to go down, that's not me. That's not me being overly negative. At least I don't think. It's not me saying, like, this, that Reddick's going, going to go down as a bust. It's me, you know, factoring a couple things, factoring in the reduced snap count, factoring in probably some age. And I think, you know, Reddick's not, I'm not expecting Reddick to completely decline into a guy who's useless. I'm saying, I think maybe he'll go from a guy who's a top of the league pass rusher to a guy who's still a very good pass rusher, still, who still helps the team a lot, but, you know, maybe doesn't could produce quite as much. And I think the, re the reason I say this is I don't want to put unfair expectations on the guy. I don't want him to come in. And, I don't want to come in and say like anything under 15 sacks is a disappointment because it's not, and it's not fair to expect that out of him. I think that, you know, again, if he's like an eight to nine sack guy producing at a very high level of efficiency, that's going to be very good for the New York Jets, what they need and how they play their guys on defense. But let's think beyond this season. Just give, just giving up a day two pick for him. As we continue here on this Monday edition of Locked on Jets, I'm going to talk a little bit about the price the Jets paid and how they can get their money's worth. Again, that's continuing this Hassan Reddick trade edition of Locked on Jets. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run, take a nap, read a book, show up for a friend? A lot of us spend times, spend our days wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Therapy has so many benefits. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It's not just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Learn to take time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. This is the Locked On Jets podcast on this Monday. The Jets have made a big trade acquiring Hassan Reddick, former member of the Arizona Cardinals, former member of the Carolina Panthers, most recently a member of the Philadelphia Eagles for the last couple of seasons, second team all pro two years ago, one of the NFL's best sack artists of the last four seasons going to add to a ferocious New York Jets pass rush. But I think it's fair to say Jets gave up quite a bit to get him. And look, you have to give up something to get quality. Um, and I see people kind of dismissing the idea that the Jets paid a price for him. Well, a couple of things. If people act like a third round pick is not valuable. Look, the meat of a lot of great NFL draft classes is on that is in that second day, the second and third round. So third round pick, that's a pretty big price to pay for a player. Um, the other thing I see people dismissing the, the, the value of the pick because it's in 2026. I mean, folks, 2026 is not that far away. It's not like it's 20 years away. It's two years away. Um, 
2026 is eventually going to come. And I see all these theories out there that like NFL teams discount the value of future picks by around, you know, like a pick next year is worth one round less than a pick this year. So for example, like a second round pick uh, next year is worth a third round pick this year. That's just silliness. I mean, that's NFL teams do it that way. Some, 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 some NFL teams actually value picks that way, but it's a silly way to operate. Now, if you're a very short-sighted team, if you're a team where your general manager's job is on the line like the Jets, maybe you don't care about future picks because you're just trying to save your own job. But let's be honest here. Jets paid a price for Hassan Reddick. And again, that's not necessarily saying that it's a bad deal, but it's saying that because, again, you have to give up something to, to get something. Uh, I understand that. And I'm not criticizing the price the Jets paid, but I'm just sitting here saying like, you can't, you can't sit there and say like the Jets gave up nothing because it's a third round pick or it's a pick in two years. Like this is a valuable pick. Two years will come here and you'll wonder why the Jets don't have a third. And some of you will wonder why the Jets don't have a third round pick. And I think it's fair to say that Reddick, who's in the final year of his contract, it would be a poor value proposition. I don't care who it is to give him a third round pick for a one year rental. You know, that would not be a good move for the New York Jets. And to me, that means one of two things has to happen here. Either one, Reddick plays one year for the Jets, he leaves in free agency, and the Jets maneuver their way to get a compensatory pick for him. And, you know, if we're if we're using Bryce Huff as a model, Huff signed a contract that would net the Jets a fourth round compensatory pick if the Jets hit certain conditions, what they're currently not about to hit in free agency. So if Reddick got a contract around the same level as Huff, you'd be talking about giving up a three for a four. And that's not a that's that's value but it's not as bad as just giving up a straight three if you're getting a four back it's you're giving I mean, it's it's still a price but it's not as big of a price however I, I do think that that's a tough thing to bet on because first of all you don't know whether your team's going to be in position to get a compensatory pick a year from now you also don't know what reddick's value is going to be you know it, it's difficult to say if you if you make this trade mid-season and like you have a good sense of the season reddick's having you probably have a sense of like what his value is going to be when he hits the open market you know that's one thing but you know, we don't really know what Reddick's value is going to be in a year if he hits the open market. So I don't think you can really make this trade with the idea that, you know, we'll just get a compensatory pick in return because we don't know whether the Jets will be in position to get that. And we don't know whether Reddick will sign a big enough contract for that. So it's almost like the Jets are going to have to sign Reddick to an extension to try and justify this deal. Because again, I don't care how good you are unless, I mean, look, if the Jets win the Super Bowl and Reddick, you know, plays at an all pro level, I guess you can justify a one-year rental, but short of that, it's going to be really, really tough to justify giving up a three for a one-year rental. So that means we're probably looking at a contract extension. And there were some conflicting reports that came out on Friday. Some media sources suggested that the Jets were likely to agree with to a new deal with Reddick. Others suggested it was not likely. The Jets have an incentive to try and reduce Reddick's uh, cap hit for this year. And the only way they could do that, or probably the most likely way they could do that, would be signing him to a new contract. And that's, you know, look, that's a risky move when you're talking about a player who's about to hit 30. But Reddick, again, is playing at a very high level. And I think that's something that could maybe maybe put your mind at ease because you know, were talking about like a year ago, the Jets brought in all these old guys. They brought in, you know, Randall Cobb, who's pretty much just finished. If you looked at Randall Cobb's production, you knew he was not going to help the Jets at all. I mean, look, if you were like, if you were just like in total, like everything the Jets do is great mode because they got Aaron Rodgers and Rodgers loves Cobb, then like, fine, maybe maybe that's how you would have justified it. You couldn't have justified it based on how Randall Cobb was playing. You couldn't justify it based on Randall Cobb's body of work recently. You couldn't justify it, justify it on what Randall Cobb brought to the table athletically. Um, you know, Dwayne Brown, maybe uh, he wasn't the guy the Jets brought in uh, last offseason, but Jets were depending on Dwayne Brown at 38 when he was clearly in decline. This is different. This year, you're bringing in older players, yes, but you're bringing in older players who are still playing at a high level. So even if these guys decline, there could be a graceful decline where, you know, maybe you know, Hassan, Hassan Reddick, who's like 85% as good as he was in Philly, is still a very productive player. So if you're signing him to a multi-year deal, and look, the Jets are in a position where they're just taking all sorts of calculated risks with older players, but you're hoping he, he ages gracefully. If you can get like three years out of him, to me, that's the type of thing where you could justify giving up a third round pick. And you just have to kind of hope now that he has that graceful aging curve. And it's a risk whenever you're dealing with an older player. It's a risk, especially a risk with a player whose game is very athleticism based as Reddick's is because he's not a big guy. You know, he's a good player. He's a well-rounded player. You know, if you're talking about if you're comparing him with Bryce Huff, um, you know, Huff's younger. Reddick's more complete because Reddick plays the run at a higher level. But it's a risk. 
still, I mean, at this point, you don't give up a three for a guy you think is going to be here for 17 games. At least I wouldn't expect you to. I hope the Jets not what the Jets are doing. And I think it's very logical, again, because the Jets are probably going to want to reduce his cap hit, which is you know in the neighborhood of $14 million this year, unless something changes. So in order to, to make this move worth it, I think you have to look at that because I just don't see how you can bet on getting a compensatory pick for him. You don't know what his value is going to be, and you don't even know if you're going to be in position to get a pick because as things currently stand, the Jets are not going to get a pick for Huff because they've been too active in free agency. And if you look next year, Jets have a ton of free agents in key spots, a ton of players hitting free agency in key spots. They're probably going to have to sign, sign replacements for them. So it's going to be tough for the Jets to get a compensatory pick in a year. So I think really what we're looking at is this is not a one-year deal. This is the Jets, I think, probably buying into Hassan Reddick's 30, age 31, 32, and 33 seasons and hoping things work out. And again, if he still plays at a high level these next three years, it'll be difficult to argue with the compensation the Jets gave up. But that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. Helps us out. Helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Have a great Monday, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Jets.